coming as individuals to serve Hashem. So, for many of us, it's very hard to do it by the book. Many of us are dealing with questions and with certain difficulties that are forcing us to move a little bit to the side and to try to find our own way on how to connect ourselves to the Torah and to keeping mitzvot. There are certain obligations that in the first time you see them, you recognize them, you want to keep them, you find yourself very far from them and don't actually know how to fit them into your life or how to bring yourself into keeping those things. And that's a struggle, that's a problem, that's an issue that many of our generation are dealing with. One can find it very hard to cover a head and one is finding it very hard to wake up and go out from the house in the morning and to pray in a minyan, in a shul. It's like the opposite of what it's comfortable and feels good for him to do and he wants to do it, he wants to keep it, she wants to do it, she wants to keep it but doesn't know really how to do it, it doesn't fit into life. So first of all we must understand that we are worshipping, believing in the one that brought down the wisdom. We're not worshipping the book itself. We're not serving the book. We're serving the one that brought down the wisdom that wrote that book. So now when you are really in touch with the Righteous One, with the Author Himself, with the Creator Himself, now it's a relationship. And it's not only a list of obligation, of commandments that you must keep. For an example to that aspect, there's just one word in the book that called Azor HaKadosh, the holy book that had been written by Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai and his friends, his students. So in that book, the Zohar HaKadosh is calling the mitzvot, the obligations, itin tavin, good advice. It's a good advice to keep Shabbat. It's a good advice to eat kosher. It's a very good advice to cover your head. It's a good advice to put filin in the morning. That's how Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai is choosing to offer the mitzvot to those people that will re read the Zohar Kadosh in the future. That's how he is explaining to you what's actually going on in giving the Torah to our nation, to reveal the wisdom of Hashem to the world. It's a good advice. It's a good way to run your life. It's a good thing for you to wake up in the morning, to wash your hands, to brush your teeth, to go to shul, to pray, to praise Hashem, to thank Hashem, to ask your requests on your needs, and to do tshuva, to confess, to share, to have an opportunity to open up, to open your heart, to share, to talk. Great! And then it's always good to know that you live in a Jewish community. It's good advice. There is wisdom in it. It's not a set of rules that comes in, in ten volumes that you have to keep them all and or else you're dead. No, it's, it doesn't work like that. I met a person once, she was from from birth and she dropped Judaism almost completely when she was 15. And she remembers the first Shabbat that she violated. And she told me that she felt that she wanted to break, to violate that Shabbat with all of her heart. She didn't want to keep it, she couldn't stand Shabbatot in her house at all. And she felt like, I must do something, but she f was afraid. She felt that if she's going to turn off the light or something like that, a lightning will come from the sky and will kill her. She, that's what she felt. She was terrified to turn off the light, but she won. She had to break Shabbat. She, ha she hated Shabbatot. In her house, in her family, it was unbearable, it was horrible Shabbat. And she didn't want it to suffer, she wanted to be happy. So one day in that Shabbat she was standing in her room with her finger about to shut off the, 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 the turn off the plug. 
and she was terrified, but she did it. And then she saw that nothing happened, she didn't die, so she turned it back on and she was happy. Why she was happy? She was happy because all of that curse that her parents probably told her all of her life that will happen to someone that will violate Shabbat, she saw that it was false, it was not right, nothing happened. So, by that twisted and bent way of education, they destroyed all of her will to keep Shabbat. And when she got that opportunity to see that what the day taught her was wrong, by understanding that, she realized that all of the Torah that she had been taught was all wrong. And then she decided, okay, so I'm not keeping Shabbat. And she went to the beach, and she started doing whatever, and that's it. And when she was 15, she was out. But the truth is that she was out since she was born. Because the way of education that she had been taught was not fit for her, was not good for her. And it's not good for none of us. Who likes to be rebuked? Who is uh, enjoy to be threatened and, and, and pushed and, 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 and forced to do things? None of us. It's not the right way. And it's also not Hashem's way. And you can ask, okay, so why there are so many judgments in the world? Why there is so much anger in the world, so much cruelty in the world? The fact that you are connecting the judgments and the difficulties that you go through in life to your sins is because that someone made that connection in your mind. But it's not that you really saw in your life that after that you did something wrong, you've been punished. It's not that you recognize that personal supervision of Hashem, that after that you do something good, you're being rewarded, and that after that you do something bad, you're being punished. You haven't seen that. I promise you, you haven't seen that. Maybe you imagined that you saw that. Maybe you thought, but only because that you heard that this is how it happens. This is, oh, he deserves it. Oh, she deserves it. Oh, it's your imagination. It was your thoughts that were connecting those two things together. But really, you don't know how the personal supervision of Hashem is working in His world. We don't know the reward on the mitzvot, and we don't know the punishments on the sins. And we don't even know exactly how they take place in the world. We can just assume, or to hear a lecture of some wise guy, the things that he knows all, and he's going to tell us exactly what's going to happen to us. He knows, like he knows. How do you know? And how do you know maybe Hashem will change it? Maybe Hashem will decide to be more patient with me and to give me more time and he understands who he died so and he knows my difficulties, he knows how many bad thoughts and negative thoughts I have and how weak I am and how sensitive I am and how fragile I am. Maybe Hashem got more Achmanut on me, he loves me, he cares about me. Why to interrupt? Because people that don't have faith cannot teach faith. So we must learn faith from people that really have faith. And also, second part, that we must count on what that we experience in life and not only to follow after teachings of other people. Because many times in life you find that reality is communicating with you in a different way. For an example, the Shulchan Aruch can tell you that you must wake up in the early dawn, every morning before of, of sunrise, and you already need to be ready and prepared, and you check yourself, and you tried it a few times in your life, and except of horrible migraines, it didn't give you anything. So, okay, I checked, I tried, I did it once, twice, one year, two years, and it's not healthy for me. Like, I'm shaking, I'm, I'm, it's, 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 it's destroying all of my day, all of my happiness, all of my health. All day long I'm nervous, I'm confused, it's not in my powers. It's not. My machine starts working at 7.30, at 8.30, some other people, 9.30 and 10.30. So if now my machine starts working at, let's say, 8.30, okay? So can it be that something is wrong with me? Why that I'll be wrong? There is a halakha, there is a rule, also for a person that wakes up at 12. There is a rule, there is a way to connect yourself with shacharit. Also, if you woke up at 4.30 p.m., there is a halakha. I'm not saying that that's the best way. 
But if you, in your case, in your situation, in your life, with your work, with your family, with the hours that you had to dedicate to that issue, that you know about it, and it's not written in the books. No, it's written in your life. Yesterday at 5 p.m. it started to be written that you suddenly had another meeting and you had to, have to help another friend and move, had to move something and you worked half of the night and now it's morning and you're done and you just went to sleep two hours ago. So now, who needs to choose what will be the right thing? You! How? With which tools? You don't know. But you know what's going on inside of you. And you must understand that if really you're honest and your intentions are to do good, to connect yourself with Hashem, so you and Hashem are one. Even if you haven't woke up before of dawn, even if you haven't went to the shul to pray shacharit in the minyan, even if you were not able to complete all the obligations and to fulfill your obligations and to be a tzedek chovat to everyone, all of the people, all of the opinions, it never works like that. You cannot do it. It's too much, way too much. So we must count on ourselves. And every person, if he will observe, and he will try to learn from his own way of thinking, try to look inside into your way of thinking, to the way that your soul is communicating with you from inside, you can learn so much about the will of Hashem. If you will check yourself, you will see that inside of your mind, inside of your thoughts, you have only two ways of thinking. One way is that good will, good intention, pure will that you have inside of yourself that wants to connect itself to Hashem all of the time. You have that voice inside of you, good intentions, good hopes, thoughts of how to clarify more things, how to learn more, how to come closer, how to be nicer, how to be a better person, how to help others. You have that way of thinking. That's a lane in your life, in your road of life. That's part, that's half of your mind. And you have the other half. The other half is your fears. All kinds of fears, but that's a second voice that you have. A negative voice a voice of laziness, of sadness, of despair, of anger, of frustration, that is always explaining to you that you must take control, that you must take decisions, that there is no Hashem, basically. That you run your life and that you must act. Those are the two voices that you have. You have one voice that is throwing you on Hashem, and tells you always there is Hashem, Hashem will help you. Look at the wonders that you experienced already, the miracles that you saw already. Remember the early days, look what happened yesterday. Think about tomorrow, don't worry, it's going to pass, it's going to be okay. Positive thoughts of hope. And from the other side, you have negative thoughts of despair. So now, good thoughts are the thoughts that are coming from your soul. Negative thoughts are the thoughts that are coming from the evil inclination side, from the dark side of your physicality, from the side that is behind the curtains that Hashem created in His world. In His world. Hashem Ibarach sent a beam of light into the creation, and that beam of light is being stuck in those curtains that Hashem created. That's His physical world. And now we are experiencing the world from both sides. We have our external aspect that we look at the world with our eyes, with our ears, with our senses. We can catch and grab the physical world even in very, very thin, gentle ways. We can smell, we can, we can, we can assume those thoughts might be also physical. We can have physical or emotional feelings. That is still an external way of experiencing life. But we all also have an inner world, a spiritual world. And that world is catching and receiving the light before of hitting those walls, before of being blocked by those curtains of creation. That, what that it means, that we need to come back to the earlier days, Chadesh Yamenu Kekedem, 
to those times that Hashem shone His love on us before all of the barriers, before all of the walls stood up in this world to block the light of Hashem. So when you're standing and facing a situation in life, you must connect yourself to the voice that will give you the tools and the power to cross that test, to succeed in that challenge. And that voice is the voice of faith. Automatically we're falling to the default, to that negative side, to the negative way of thinking. Oh, I don't have hope. Oh, I'm not going to make it. Oh, what I'm going to do? Start questioning and doubting and consulting with people and forget about the purpose of life. Forget about the opportunity to connect yourself to the endless power of hope, of happiness, of good, of health, of wealth, of success. That's our default. Those are our patterns, way of thinking that based on emotional trauma, that based on pain from the past, on old emotional memories, and they are disconnecting us from reality. What do I mean? Slowly, slowly I'm going to explain it to you and also going to bring it for you to actions. Not only is the wise theory, also to receive tools to know how to deal with life in those hard situations. When a person is thinking like that, based on his patterns, based on his emotional thoughts from the past, basing his thoughts on old memories, when he's thinking like that, he is disconnected from reality. For an example, if you walk now in the street and you see someone that walks in front of you, a person can have negative thoughts about that person who knows who he is, who he might be, it can be a robber, it can be a murderer, it can be a violent person, who knows what he can do to me, what, how he can harm me, great. Now, why are you thinking those negative thoughts? Not because that that person is evil and you found a knife or you saw his gun or something like that, not because he started cursing you or whatever, just because that you saw some sick movie or that you've been exposed to the news or you heard some horrible story that happened to some poor person in a dark alley in, this, in, in one of the nights and now based on that you're afraid of that situation, of that man, of that person. But it might be that that person is your best friend actually. It might be that that person now is a the person that's afraid of you in the exact same way that you're afraid of him. So, actually, you're afraid of something that is wrong, something that does not exist. Not that it's not exist somewhere in the world. It is somewhere, but now it's not really a threat on your life. Now, for another example, you want to ask for a raise, you want to go and, and, and to ask for another job, a better position in your work. Great. Now, negative thoughts that based on your past, foreign thoughts that based on shames and failures from your past will make you scared even to offer and suggest yourself to that next position. Why? Because you're afraid to be rejected. And you're not going to do it, and you're going to hate yourself, and you're going to blame yourself on being so worthless and hopeless and you're, gonna, you're never going to be able to forgive yourself on not jumping on that opportunity, when really, in reality, it might be that that boss is counting on you and willing to give you that position. And maybe really he just needs you. And if you're going to listen to your voice that guides you to count on Hashem, you will be a miracle in the life of your boss. Because five minutes ago, his boss called him and told him that he needs someone else to take over on something, and he's lost. And Hashem used now your thoughts to wake you up, but you're too terrified to go and apply, to go and ask. Why? Because you are counting on your patterns, on your old emotional pain, <coughs> and you dropped your logic and your faith and you let your fears run your life. 
so actually. In reality, you could receive that job, kids could receive that raise, could receive that opportunity, and just to succeed and to grow. But you're not going to do it because you're scared. So you are far from reality. You're far from the truth. By basing your thoughts based on the past, on the old patterns, how are we going to recognize, how I'm going to know what is the right way, what is the wrong way. Always, always, always. The right way is the happy way. The bad way is the sad way. <laughs> if you have negative thoughts, don't follow them. But maybe they're warning me. No, they're not. I promise to you, you're afraid to go out at night, go out at night. If you're now afraid to have a conversation, take my advice, make that conversation happen tonight. When? Now. If you're afraid to uh, do something, but you want to do it, and you feel that it will make you happy if you're going to do it, do it. You will only succeed 100%. And not because of verses, because of trying to put those verses into our life, and we're finding it successful. We're finding that it happens. Only if you try, you can see the results of that effort. But before you try, you can never know. Can I describe to you the taste of a certain fruit that you never tasted before? I can tell you it's sweet. I can tell you it's a little bit sour. It's kind of soft and also hard. What, how can I describe to you something that you never experienced? I cannot. Oh, it was amazing vacation. It was so beautiful. You're thinking about one thing, and I remember something else, and we can never connect until both of us were there together, and we all saw the same view, and now when we're going to talk about it, we're going to have something in common. But in reality, until you've been to that place, you cannot know. So if you want to know, you must try. If you want to see the mercy of Hashem, if you want to reveal the kindness of Hashem in His world, that He's the Creator, you must give Him the opportunities to create things in your life. So for that, you must stop blocking that light because of your fears, because of your sadness, because of your despair. And you can say, and I will agree, but I went through so many failures in life, but I failed so many times, I've been rejected so many times. Look, my life experience taught me that I need to be careful. I'm not criticizing you to tell you it's okay. I don't mind. You can stay like that. But I'm telling you that you have a huge potential. You can grow. You can succeed big time. And not only you. Also, all of the people that will be close to you and will see and will experience through you the miracles that you will have, they will enjoy from it. And they will benefit from it. And they will grow. And if your self-confidence will grow, you will have more power and ability to bring a change into their life as well. And we're obligated in that, to live good life. And Hashem is also asking us, why you were serving me without joy? But you were not happy. You were serving me, but you were not happy. It cannot be that the person really will serve Hashem and will be sad and depressed. So if you find yourself that you are sad and depressed, it means that you are not with Hashem. Not that Hashem rejected you. Let's talk about Hashem for a second. Where is Hashem? Hashem is here. Hashem is everywhere. Hashem is in all the worlds. Hashem is in all the houses, inside all the places, inside and outside, surrounding the worlds and, and filling them from inside. He is the Avaya. He is everywhere. Right? Great. Now, let's say I want to be close to Hashem. Great. So, how should I do it? It already happened. It's all, that's my creation that I'm close to Hashem. Why? Because Hashem made me inside of Him. Where Hashem Itbarach put me? In His world. And where is the world? Inside of Hashem. So everything that will happen now is with Hashem, 100%. Okay, great. Now I want to be close to Hashem. How am I going to get closer to Hashem? Just think about Him. He is with you. 
really to come closer to Hashem, it's only to think about Hashem in Barach more often. That's the only way to be closer to Hashem. Because you and Hashem is one. It's not like really you need to do something to experience Hashem. Hashem is here. When you breathe, you breathe Hashem. When you eat, you eat Hashem. When you taste something, you taste Hashem. When you smell, you smell Hashem. Everything is Hashem. And there is nothing except of Him. So it's not like you can really run away. The only way to run away from Hashem is to distract your thoughts to something else. Okay, I'm not going to think about Him now. I'm going to think about something else. And you have people that went all the way and they rarely think about Hashem. So, okay, they don't think that there is Hashem in the world because they're not thinking if there is Hashem in the world or not. But in that moment that they will start thinking about it, they will find more evidence and more proofs for the fact that Hashem is here. It's only a matter of you wanting that, seeking for Hashem, hoping for Hashem, praying for Hashem. In the moment that you do something, some act toward Hashem, Hashem will expose Himself to you on the spot. When it's going to happen? In the future? After finishing all Shas? After learning all the Gemara, all the Talmud? No. It will happen in the present. In the moment of preparation, in that moment that you aimed your heart to Hashem, in that moment Hashem has already been there with you. Hashem is already with you in 100%. Already, because Hashem in Barach, He is covering us and He's feeding us from inside. So if you want to connect yourself to Hashem, so the way to do it is to become positive. It's to work on that lane of positive thoughts of building your confidence, of trying again. Doing tshuva, it means to give a chance to yourself. That's what it means to do tshuva. To be a bad tshuva that wants to come closer to Hashem, it means only one thing, to give myself a chance. To give myself a second opportunity. And it can be the, 2000, the number 2,000th opportunity for me. If I don't have a choice, if I failed again, what can I do? If my intentions are really to come close to Hashem, how can I help it if I'm failing again and again and over and over? How can I stop it? There is only one thing that I can do, and it's to ask for Hashem to help me. Like the Gemara is saying, that Ilmala Kadosh Baruch Hu Azro, and I follow. Without the help of the Creator, you cannot beat the evil inclination. There is only one way to win. The way to win is to connect yourself to Him. How you connect yourself to Him? Thinking about Him. And we're not talking about not keeping Torah mitzvot. We're talking about keeping Torah mitzvot while keeping our smile on our faces, while keeping ourselves alive, doing things out of joy. Like the Torah is telling us that it's better that the person going to do less with the right intention than to do a lot with no intention. It's better to do with, with, with your heart something for Hashem than to do everything but with no heart, with sadness, oh, I hate those Shabbatot, I can't stand that holiday, I hate it, why should I do it? I'm, I must be modest, I must cover my head. That's not the way. That's not the will of Hashem. Hashem is not an abusive father. We are counting on the guidings of twisted people that taught us that Hashem in Barach is abusive, that Hashem in Barach is angry, that Hashem in Barach is upset, that Hashem in Barach will revenge, that Hashem in Barach will punish. And if you're gonna also going to ask, but it's written in the verses, it's written in the Bible that Hashem is punishing, that Hashem is destroying. We saw Hashem exploded, Hashem destroyed, Hashem made horrible things happen. It's true. But did you really ask yourself what happened over there? Or that you just let your fears interpret those situations? Are you sure that it was a punishment? Are you sure that it was a revenge? Are you sure that you can see the complete picture to know exactly what happened over there? I think no, no. I think not. I think we don't have the eyes that can contain so much information to understand what happened over there. I think that if we would have seen Hashem in Barach in those hours 
of pain and sorrow and darkness that went down into to the world, we would die from seeing the sorrow on the face of Hashem in those moments. So you're going to ask, how can it be? Hashem, He is doing things that will make Him upset? He is making things happen and then He is sad because that He did them? The answer is beyond our reach. We cannot answer those questions. That is faith. Faith is in the night. Faith is in the dark places that you cannot see, that you cannot recognize, that you believe that Hashem is good, even if you cannot see it. Even if you cannot recognize His beauty and His kindness and His glory and you just suffer right now, in that moment we need to believe. To believe in what? To believe in the miracles that we saw. To believe in the earliest learnings that we experienced, on what that we experienced in the past, on what that we learned before, on the wisdom that Hashem Ibrach revealed to us and exposed to us in the days that the sun was rising, that the success was shining. In those days we saw something, don't drop it when it's night. When it's daytime, so you need to prepare your house that when the night will come, you will be organized and you'll have the power to deal with the night. The night will come and then there are predator, predators and there are robbers and it's darkness so you cannot see. So what should you do? You should build a fence during the day. You should put a lock on your door when it's still day. You need to put a lamp when it's still a day that when the night will come, you will have the power and the tools to deal with darkness. But when it's dark, you need to count on Hashem and nothing else that you can do except of believe in Hashem and talk to Hashem and pray to Hashem and ask for salvations from Hashem until the night will pass and then a new dawn will come and the sun will rise again and you will be able to see more and then to go and to complete that fence that you haven't completed yesterday and to bring that locksmith to help you with what that you haven't fixed completely and step by step you're going to complete it one day after the other to achieve what? to achieve that power to cross the next night that that next night will not be as dark and as hard as last night, as the night before one year ago. In every situation we need to learn from every opportunity, from every case, from every moment of our life we need to learn. We need to learn what Hashem wants from us. And inside of us there is that positive voice that we spoke about. That's the light of your soul. That is the light of our neshama. And that light is calling us from inside. And if really a person will put his mind to listen to that voice, he will recognize that that voice is not his own voice. It's the voice of Hashem that is talking to you from inside. The voice of your soul is like an instrument. It's like a flute that Hashem Barach is using to call you in a voice that you will recognize. So he's using your own voice to call you from inside. And from inside he's telling you, look for me, find me, find Hashem. Hashem will help you. You will find things you're asking for. You will be answered. Try to pray, have hope, don't give up. All of those thoughts are aiming you to find Hashem to count on Hashem, to be able to live your life with your eyes closed and close to Hashem, to be able to step into the darkness with no fear. Like Moshe Rabbeinu, he is able to go back to Egypt. Who is crazy enough to go back to Egypt? Only Moshe. Why? Because he is with Hashem. He can go into a flaming fire. Why? Because Hashem is there. He put it into his mind that Hashem is close and then when he's throwing himself into the depths of the sea, into the darkness, he finds Hashem over there. Because Hashem is really inside those worlds. Just your fears, if you're basing your thoughts on your fears, will make you scared. 
And then when you will be scared, you will be also confused and you're going to lose control and you're going to start acting wrong and you're going to fail. You're going to fall because of your stress, because of your anxieties, not because that Hashem Barach failed you. Hashem Barach, and I'm talking from my life experience, only opened channels and ways and roads for me to come closer to Him. And it's not that I didn't go through difficulties. I am, and I was, and I probably gonna continue to have them. Because that part of, that is part of life. You need to deal with situations. You need to attach yourself to Hashem from certain places in life. But, it's not that Hashem in Barach was failing me. Hashem in Barach walked with me into those dark hours. It's not that he threw me away into the darkness and then over there I was on my own. Also when I was calling him from darkness, I felt his warmth. I felt his love. But really to feel that love and to feel that support, you need to do something. You need to call him. If over there in darkness you lost your mind and you start shooting arrows all over the place, cursing and, and, and swearing and losing your mind, you cannot experience the good, the kindness, the wisdom that is hidden inside those tests. But if you are focusing and you try to put your mind into what really goes on in my life, you can find so many pearls and diamonds and gold in the depths in those caves, in the mud, in the filthiest and darkest places of the universe, good stones and diamonds that you cannot find on the surface, that you cannot find in the sky. And Hashem Barach, He's got a purpose. And Hashem Barach, He knows why. And if you look back on the hard times that you went through in life, you will see that you achieved a lot because of those humiliations, because of those difficulties. For an example, if you've been hurt, if you've been insulted, if you've been ashamed, now it's true, it wasn't fun at all, it was very painful, but I think that it gave you a tool. For an example, it gave you the sensitivity to care about other people that are going through the same pain that you went through. So it gave you a heart. So how can we estimate that heart? How can we understand how great is that heart that we received? And I'm asking you, was there another way to give you that heart? Was there another way in the world to give you that heart that today will care about others, will pray for others, will think about others, will try to do good things for other people? And how many mitzvot because of that heart, that broken heart that you received from Hashem? Hashem had to break your heart to make it a heart. Because when it was complete, it was not complete. It was made out of stone and you could not feel and you couldn't sense and you couldn't realize that there are other people around you. But after that you've been broken to pieces and even crushed to dust, now you can feel. Why? Because the physical heart is nothing. The spiritual heart the emotional heart, the heart that can sense, is not stuck in physical shape. When your physical heart broke, been broke, been, been, been destroyed, your spiritual heart starts shining. Because that the light of Hashem is shining through the curtains. So if the curtains are strong and thick, you cannot see Hashem. The light of Hashem barely can penetrate, but when you break it, you make a crack. And through that crack, the beams of light, the sparks are shining. And if it had been broke again and again and again, so now you're shining. And it's true, it's painful, and no one is ordering those sorrows, no one is asking for that pain. But after the fact, when you look back, you see how many great things Hashem Baruch did with us and built us and brought us to a place that today we're thinking about Him. He is part of our life, part that cannot be separated from our life. 
because that we've been humbled by life, because that we, from those hard times, hard hours, were asking for Hashem Midbach to reveal Himself to us. And when He revealed Himself to us in those hard and dark hours, the mark that it left on our heart was so powerful that today we cannot forget Him anymore. Today, in every situation, He is coming back into our thoughts. And we have more hope. And we're praying more. And we're learning more. And we're coming closer to Him. And we're more humble. So we're dealing with situations in a better way. And it benefits our life. And it doesn't mean that you have a million dollars in your bank account. It doesn't mean that you have everything you asked for. But the fact that you don't have all the financial luxuries that you want or the physical health that you ask for yourself doesn't mean that you don't have the really important things that life has to offer you. I met a couple that they're amazing people. They're very generous, they're super kind, they're so sweet, they're so nice, they're like amazing people. If you want to ask what Hasidim are, so they're real Hasidim. Real holy people that wants to do good with everyone, they care about everyone, amazing people. But that couple went through so many difficulties in life. They went through so many crises and they were dealing with so many crises and, and challenges in life that it's impossible to understand. And then you find yourself as a good person that tried to do so many good things in life and you failed again and Hashem Barach closed another way for you and another door he blocked and you cannot succeed in that and now you had to deal with that and it traumatized you. It shook your stability. Your confidence is not as strong as before. And you look at yourself and you feel, I failed. I failed. Why? Why after standing in so many challenges and passing so many tests, a person still can feel that he failed? <coughs> Only because that he is not focusing on the real purpose of life. The real purpose of life is to connect yourself to the spiritual aspect of your life. To your connection to Hashem, not to your connection to physicality. To aim your heart and your mindset to observe and to look into the spiritual benefits, into the spiritual success that you experienced already and the share that is waiting for you in the eternal world, in the world to come. How much we achieved until now, we cannot count. We cannot estimate. We can never know. If you smiled even once to a person, if you helped to a family even once, you can never understand the great reward that is waiting for you, that is offered to you, that you're enjoying from it already right now in this world. There are people that when they're smelling some food or some incense or something, they cannot smell it. They don't have the ability to smell. And you can smell. There are people that when they're eating, they cannot enjoy the food. And you enjoy the food. There are people that when they're alone in their house, they don't have no quiet, and you have. And you have many things that you have in life that you're ignoring them because your thoughts are suffering. Why are you suffering? Because your mind is falling and distracted all of the time to the negative thinking, to that bad foreign way of thinking negative, sad, and depressed thoughts, following the pain and the physical trauma and the emotional sorrow that you experienced in the past. But it is taking you to a place that you lose connection to reality because you stop experiencing Hashem. You stop thinking about the truth 
that Hashem is really good, that Hashem is really with you, that Hashem is really helping you even though that you keep on going through difficulties and have to cross those challenges and deal with them. You lose your connection to reality when you let sadness and despair run your life. But if from every situation you will choose to start again, to give yourself a chance, to give Hashem a chance, to give the Torah a chance, to give your friend a chance, to give the world, to give life a chance, a second opportunity, and another opportunity, and to restart and to reborn to this world over and over in every moment of your life, you're just going to throw yourself back into life, back into, into doing the right thing, you will see how much success you're going to find. How many fruits you're going to harvest? How many treasures you're going to find? Because the success of having faith is so much greater than the financial success. To have hope and to be positive about life is such a greater gift than to be so wealthy and healthy and strong and powerful and surrounded with a gigantic family. You can find yourself with all the treasures in the world and to hate yourself and to hate life and to feel that everyone betrayed you and you're alone and you suffer. And you can find yourself alone and to be happy and to feel confident that Hashem is with you because you never left Hashem. Because when you are coming closer to Hashem, Hashem is coming closer to you. And when you go away from Hashem means that you distract your thoughts from the positive way of thinking and basing your thoughts on fears and anxieties and sadnesses and arrogance you are walking away from Hashem because you're not looking at Hashem you're looking to other directions and then you cannot experience Hashem because your mind is thinking about something else not because that Hashem left you not because that you are being punished now just because you are walking against the stream, because you're going against the light, because you're going to the wrong direction. You're driving into a dead end and then you find yourself dead in the end. What do you want for yourself? It's a, what do you want from the road? You decided to go in the other direction. Okay. There's a joke on uh, a woman that she's watching the news and she sees some, some you know, those live uh, situations that they're showing on camera, the helicopters, and she sees a car that drives in the opposite direction. And suddenly they're writing the, ad, the, the, the address, where is it happening? And it's in the highway and she knows that her husband is also driving in that highway right now. So she's calling to him. And she's telling him, hey, what's going on? Are you okay? He said, yes, I'm fine. Everything is good. So she's telling him, be careful. You're on the highway. He says, yes. He said, be careful. There is a crazy person that drives in the opposite direction, against the, 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 the direction. So he tells her, what? I see thousands of them. <laughs> that poor guy. He sees thousands of people driving in the wrong direction. The fact that we think that we're right doesn't make us right. We need to check. So how are we going to check? Go ask someone. He can give you an opinion. Go and ask someone else. He's going to give you a second opinion, third opinion, fourth opinion. How are you going to choose? Oh, he's got the life experience. Okay, but maybe he's wrong. He, he never wrong. See, he can be wrong. His wife will testify on him that he can be wrong. <laughs> he's wrong. For sure he's wrong. So how can I count on him? You cannot. So who you can count on? God created you. He sent you to this world. It cannot be that the Creator will send you to a mission without the proper tools to deal and to solve that situation and to win. And to achieve complete victory, completion in the end. It's impossible that the kind, merciful Father of mercy will send you to a mission without the right tools to succeed. So your height, that's the height that is required for your job. Your wisdom, that is the wisdom that is required for your mission. The way you look, the way you think, the money that you have, the powers that you have, your health that you have, 
everything that God gave you is 100% perfect for your life mission. As long as you're going to try to copy other people and to pretend that you're not yourself, you're always going to feel that you don't have the powers, that you don't have the tools, because you don't have the car that he's driving yet, and you don't have the house that he lives in. Why? Because you are trying to live someone else's life, so you cannot do that because you don't have the tools, because you're not him. But if you're going to understand that you're on a mission, that you have a job, that God sends you for a certain purpose, and you're going to start investigating, okay, so what is my purpose? Who am I in His world? You're going to find that you have the tools and the power to accomplish everything that you need. And then you will also going to find happiness. And happiness you can find only inside. Because like we said, money can destroy people's life. And beauty can destroy people's life. And, 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 and health can destroy people's life. He was healthy as a bull and he decided to go and to climb the mountains and he died. Now what are you going to do? Because he was athletic, because he was strong, because he was young, and because he was careless. So he died. But he used all the powers that he had to destroy his own life. So, what's the use? What's the big deal of being so strong and powerful? Maybe a weak person, weak in his mind also, with a bad memory, with so many hard hours and, 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 and traumas in his life, <coughs> will make a better future, will help so many other people than that strong, powerful, handsome man. So what? Rich and wealthy and healthy. So what? It doesn't mean that really he came closer to Hashem because of his physical success. The real success in life, it's to connect yourself to the Creator from inside. To connect yourself spiritually to Hashem. The way to do it, it's to use the tools and the vessels that God gave you. For an example, to know the truth, to define between good to bad. Those are things that you can do on your own. You don't need a rabbi for that. You don't need a teacher to teach you how to know if something is good or, or, or not. The only reason that you will choose to do something bad or to justify a bad action will be if you are choosing to follow those negative thoughts that are telling you that you must steal because Hashem will not going to give you money, that you must fight because Hashem is not protecting you, that you must humiliate that person before He's going to humiliate you because you don't want to experience that humiliation based on the emotional pain that came to you in your past. So you're going to become the enemy of the world, you're going to be an and jealous and envious and, and violence and cruel and, and damaging everyone only because that you're not pulling yourself to count on Hashem. But when you are dragging and forcing yourself day after day, night after night, to become a better person and to try to do as much as you can and to go on the right way and to find the, the, the truth and the real wisdom and the message of Hashem, when you're going to do that consistently, you will see so many results. You will see that your life will improve in so many ways. And it doesn't mean that your husband now will be the most charming person in the world. It doesn't mean that now you will be so wealthy or rich. But you will have an inner peace. You will find yourself. You will find your inner quiet. You will find what that you were looking for. You will know what you want to do with your free time. You will know which books you want to read and which books you don't feel like reading anymore. You will find your path, you will find your true self, and you're going to find your inner connection to the Creator that is revealing Himself to us from inside. And that's the biggest gift of them all, to find your inner connection to our Father in Heaven. And there are many enemies to distract your thoughts and to take you away from that. Every tree, every squirrel, every car, every phone call, every person, they are your enemies. It doesn't mean you need to fight with them. You need to remind yourselves that your Hashem Barach is hiding Himself behind those curtains. Those people that are standing in front of you are just showing to you the message that Hashem Barach wants 
you to hear. If now there is a person that is talking with you, you need to remember that it's the mouth of Hashem that is talking to you. Some of the things are connected to you, some of the things are not so much. You need to listen to the voice of Hashem. You heard that lecture, you heard that speech, great. Everyone needs to take something else from that conversation. The message is not one for everyone. We're not droids, we're not robots, we're not supposed to copy each other and to become the same. One will decide to work on his relationship with his soulmate. One will decide to go and apologize to his child. One will decide to stand up and to be strong and to apply for that new position in work. And someone else will decide to start talking to Hashem. Everyone will take that speech to a different place because he is in a different place. And that's the will of Hashem. And Hashem in Baruch, He gives the opportunities for people to find their inner connection. To find the sparks that really belongs to them, that they will come closer and closer to Him, that's His will. The way for us to do it, it's to listen to our inner voice. And how are we going to know and define between the positive and the negative? The negative is pushing you to sadness, to anger, to despair, and the positive sends you to be happy, to have faith, to have hope. So when you have negative thoughts, ignore them. Even if you're paralyzed, even if you're terrified, even if you feel like I'm about to die. No, you're not gonna die. Nothing bad will happen to you. The fact that you're afraid is not because that you have an enemy. It's because that you have negative thoughts that are presenting a potential enemy. But it's going on only in your mind. It's only your thoughts. There are no enemies in reality. There might be. But maybe when a real enemy will come, if you will be calmer and happier and more relaxed, you will be able to deal with that enemy with a smile on your face. And really to reject him and to stand up against him and to tell him what you think about his behavior. And maybe he will fold and run away and be scared from you because you had strength and you had power. And maybe... You don't even know that when you're strong and you're confident, so Hashem in Barach is standing behind you. And that person will be scared of Hashem without you even knowing who is backing you up. And you're not going to even experience it. But Hashem will protect you because you were counting on Hashem. Because you went with your inner voice. To serve Hashem, it's not only in kindness. It's not only in generosity. It's not only in being nice. It's also on being strong. It's also on to be tough. Also to say your words. Also to fight for the truth. Also to save the weak. It's not only to be good and, and nice and friendly and politically correct. King David, that he's the eternal Mashiach of the world, he was killing thousands of people in the war with his bare hands, with his sword. His sword was bleeding in the end of the war. He killed thousands of people in his lifetime. And he is that gentle poet that was writing songs and singing to Hashem. And for him there was no difference. He wasn't losing his mind and going to the war. He was fighting the wars of Hashem. If you know that there is a weak person in your neighborhood, in your street, in your building that needs help, you need to stand up for him. You have that obligation. If you heard her screaming, if you heard him crying, if you noticed something, Hashem exposed you to that situation for a reason. And you cannot exempt yourself from that because Hashem is with you and Hashem will tell you what is your mission and what is not. And if you heard that person sorrow, you're obligated. In a way, check yourself. What is my power? What is my position? What is my job? What is really, what Hashem expects me to do? To give him my life savings? Maybe it's too much. Maybe it's not. What's the will of Hashem? What really I can do for him? And not to put the fact that I'm afraid of not having money. And not to put the fact that I'm too lazy or that I'm scared to, to be hurt by those bullies. I don't know what. No. Take all the negative thoughts and throw them away behind your back. And count on Hashem and ask Hashem, what do you want me to do? 
And for the sake of truth, I'm ready to die. I'm ready to lose all my money. I'm ready to throw myself to you. But I want to know that it's really your will. And I'm counting on you that if I'm going to follow you, you're going to back me up. That's the way to do it. Not to give charity because you're afraid. Not to keep Shabbat because you're too scared not to. Not to eat kosher because you don't want to be punished in the world to come. To be one of the soldiers because you're ready to fight. Because you love your master. Because you worship your king. That you admire. That you love. Because you think that it's right to fight for the poor even if you don't have faith in God. Because you feel that that's the right way. Feel complete with yourself. Be happy with who that you are. And don't be afraid of the challenges, of the wars, of the fights. Because inside of you there is a flaming fire that is desiring to do the right thing. And when you don't do the right thing, on that you hate yourself. And on that you blame yourself. And on that you cannot forgive yourself for not standing up for those weak, for not saying your opinion in that case, for not being positive and happy and, 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 and that you didn't dare to do and to, do and to go and to succeed. On that you can hate yourself for the rest of your life. So why to fall to that place? Go be who that you are and don't be afraid of failures. So what? Like you never failed before, like you never been hit before. So you're gonna be hit again. What's going to happen to you? Nothing. You're only going to buy <laughs> happiness and honor and respect, feeling of completion, closeness to Hashem. You'll feel the spirit, the pure spirit of Hashem, filling you from inside, making you stronger and healthier and much more powerful. And with the power to give advice to other people, and to support people spiritually, financially, in any way, emotionally. You can give life to a person with a smile. You can give life to a person with a hug, with a text message on the phone, knocking at his door, bringing a cupcake to his house. You can save him from killing himself and you're never gonna know. You will never gonna know what you did in his life. One cupcake, you can never know. How can you affect people? But the low self-image, me, I'm not worthy, who am I to knock on his door? I'm not a genius, I don't have the advice for him. You don't need to tell things that you don't know. What you do know, when someone loves you, you feel good, you know that, right? So love. When someone gives you a compliment, it gives you a good feeling, right? So be generous in that aspect and say good words to other people. Do only what that you know that is good. Do only what that you know that works for you. What that makes you happy. To receive a, bo a chocolate box, even if you don't like chocolate, it's nice. Everyone likes to receive chocolate, even if you're not gonna eat it. Just the fact you receive chocolate, it's nice. So do that. Do whatever you know that brings a smile to your face. Make other people smile. That's the will of Hashem. <clears throat> and not to bend and to twist the real faith and to replace it in a fake faith, on a false faith of people that never experienced a spiritual connection and relationship with Hashem. Base your life on your own life experience and count on your inner voice that it guides you and took you to this place that you are at right now. Remember your success, your spiritual success, your emotional success, the things that you achieved until now. And based on that, build your future and give support and love to the rest of your beloved ones. Hashem Yidvarach bless us all with success and happiness and the power to illuminate to the wide world the real light of faith, the real light of Hashem, light of kindness, of friendship, of honor and respect, generosity and all good attributes. Hashem Yidvarach answer to all of our prayers and respects and requests. Amen. 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 Amen.
world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all Him, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks. husks.